Horse Tales is proudly brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. South Carolina, a true leader in the equine industry. Folks, remember back in the day, the old guy would come walking up, he'd walk a mile for a camel. Well, today, folks, the old PD Cowboy walked a steamy mile here in October. It's 90 degrees and very humid to bring you a great show. Today, good friend and clinician Mark Hossman is going to be here with Horsemanship 101. we got some ladies here that want some help with the horses and kind of find out how to go to the next level. A couple old friends that I hunt with, I said, hey, I got just the guy to help you keep them falling off every time we go hawk hunting. So hold on to that saddle horn, folks. We're going to bring you some Horsemanship 101. All my life, I've been obsessed with horses. I was curious and wanted to see other people's love for their horses and their stories. I'm David Grant, the PD Cowboy, and along with some incredible horse owners, I want to share the story of horses and the people that have a passion for them. Horse Tales proudly brought to you by Morel Tire, Latta, South Carolina, working tirelessly to bring you the best service in the industry. Warren Coker, Coastal Bermuda Hay Farms, Olanta, South Carolina. Hey, and a whole lot more. Circle Y, fancy enough for the show ring, tough enough for everyday use. Don't go racing around looking for a car loan. At Anderson Brothers Bank, we take on all challenges to get you financed. Anderson Brothers Bank. Right car, right payment, right now. First, we're here at the Grant Ranch for my first show here at the house, and joining me now is Mark Hossman, good friend, clinician extraordinary. Folks, I'm gonna tell you, uh, we was talking the other day about, we went out singing karaoke, and I said, man, look at all these people so talented. Why aren't they famous? I said, well, they won in a thousand. But folks, one point I want to make, Mark Hossman is as good as there is. Mark just really chooses, kind of stays under the radar, but I'm going to tell you something, folks. You sit there and watch the brand names on TV, he is that good. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Mark, you're living in Waxhaw, North Carolina, but you hail right. from where? Uh, McAllen, Texas, originally, right down on the Mexican border. Yep. Well, tell us, a little, folks, a little bit about yourself. You're a military man, too? I was, years and years ago. Uh, was in the U.S. Army for 10 years and all my life been involved with horses in one way or another, even when I was overseas, but uh, decided one day that that was what I was going to do the rest of my life, so here I am. Well, I've been privileged to spend many hours on horseback with you, deer hunting and hog hunting, and I just uh, have always been really impressed with the way you handle a horse. You never, you never, never get in a hurry. You, you let the horse run into your hands and he learns real quick. But Mark, you grew up, uh, I said, well, how'd you learn all that? You said, well, you grew up in Texas chasing cows and all that. So you've been riding since you was that high? Well, I was. My grandparents were actually from Michigan and my grandmother and grandfather had 60, 70 horses at a time. And you spend a lot of summers up there, but all of my friends down in South Texas, most of them had horses on their ranches too. And so we, we were always doing something, but we got called to catch a lot of wild cows back in the day. So how did uh, the uh, becoming a clinician come about? I, you know, when I was learning horsemanship, I learned everything the same way everybody else did, which was, you know, you pull right to go right, you pull left to go left, you pull hard with both hands and you stop, and if you want to go faster, you just kick harder. And, uh, you know, that works to a point, but I always knew there was a better way. And I saw a lot of people do a lot of things that were pretty severe with horses and just really kind of made it my life's work to, to find better, easier ways that were a better deal for the horse and still get to a better place sooner. And uh, that's what I'm on the journey of right now. Well, I know another reason you started doing it too. What's that? Because you got uh, a few rough years of riding bulls. Tell the folks a little bit about your <laughs> bullish uh, days. Yeah, well, I, did, <laughs> I rode bulls for 23 years. Uh, I was a rodeo clown and bullfighter for 21 years, rode bucking horses and all kinds of stuff for a long time. And you can get pretty busted up doing all that. And, uh, you know, the military was great, but you know they won't let you grow a really cool mustache. So, you know, I had to make a choice. Well, you uh, got quite a, a family too. I think you got uh, 
two two daughters and two, two daughters sons and two and, sons. and you say you got a wife and two daughters that ride right that's correct uh they they're all very successful in their different horse things my wife has more world championships than i do uh my daughter just is, is an eventer and just won a really big deal the american eventing championships this year uh, oldest daughter is an equestrian vaulter, gymnastics on horseback, and she's been very successful with that. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Oh, a very special family. Folks, when we come back here, Mark's going to tell us a little bit about what to expect here today. I hope I don't put him on the spot, but uh, Mark's like a magician with a rabbit. He's got a lot of tricks in his old bag. So, Mark, looking forward to it. Let's do it. Folks, we're getting ready to go in the round pen, and we've got a special, many special guests here today, but Angie Gardner, a good, good friend of mine, and Woodrow's ready for it too. Angie, uh, what brings you out to the Grant Ranch today? Well, I've been riding a long time, and um, never had a horse quite like this. She's, she's really got my number. She, she will not go when I'm on her back. She's figured out that she doesn't have to. She threw me a few weeks ago when I asked her to go, and, um, so that's why we're here, hoping we can get some help, see if I can get her to go. And you said her name was? Diva. Diva. There Pitch. you go. There you go. Yeah. Careful Mark. what you name them. <laughs> All right, Mark, what do you think? We can do that. Yeah, we're, we can have her doing that just fine. Uh, it's not an uncommon problem. I see it once in a while. It's usually easier to make them go than to make them woe, but I understand this one's got way more woe than go. Oh, yeah. wow. But uh, I tell people all the time, I, if they'll stand still, I like them. I can make any horse go. I don't want to wonder if I can make them woe. So we've already got the woe part. We'll add some go and we'll have a lot of fun. All right, folks, we ain't woe and we going to the round pen. Let's go. <laughs> Here we are in the round pen with Diva and Angie. Uh, remember, she has a, a woe button, but not a go button when somebody's in the saddle. So I'm going to take the horse away from her for a minute, let her step outside the round pen while I let my horse Woodrow here introduce himself to Diva. We're going to move her feet around a little bit from the saddle and then I'm going to turn her loose and, and work her a little bit off of my horse and then I'm going to do some things probably on the ground with her and then either step up there myself and see if she wants to go or or we'll find a jockey and uh, see how that goes. So Angie if you'll just let me have her and you go okay. ahead and step on out the gate we will uh, see what kind of attitude Angie has toward getting pushed around a little bit. With any horse, when I want to start moving them around, whether I'm riding them or on the ground, I, I think of everything in terms of pushing the horse around rather than pulling them around. You'll notice I'm not gonna do a lot of pulling on this lead rope, but I wanna move Diva's feet around and make her understand that, that I can't. Because if she's not willing to let me push her around and move her feet, then she's not going to respect me or my horse. You know, everything with any horse comes down to do we or do we not have control of the horse's feet? So if I'm controlling the horse's feet, then I don't have to pull and I don't have to push much. All I have to do is give direction and speed and the horse should want to pay attention once they understand that I do have authority or control of their feet. If I can't, then I have to back up and do some stuff. Very often we'll do this kind of stuff from the ground, but because we're in a round pen with another horse, I just want her to be thinking about getting pushed around. So she doesn't, she's not getting mad about it, she's not all upset, but she is allowing me to move her feet a little bit, and uh, I'm just going to turn her loose, and I'm going to drive her around the pen a little bit. As soon as she's done with her snack because she hadn't seen this one yet Initially when I'm moving her around, I don't even care what direction she goes, but I was I want to control it. But I just want her to think about moving. So 
right now I'm pushing her. You see how I have my horse positioned to just kind of drive off of this horse's hip. I'm just telling her to keep going by keeping my horse moving a little bit. And even if I slow my horse down, if I kind of keep focused on that horse's hip or tail, just because I'm pointed there, I'm putting pressure behind this horse, so I'm driving her forward. When she, when I want to change direction, I'm going to cut her off over here and put pressure over here in front of her, and she doesn't think much of that, does she? That's pony version of giving me the finger. So I'm going to change direction quite a bit, whether I do it from the ground or up here in the saddle. I'm going to do it till she'll stop and turn much more respectfully because I'm putting pressure over here. That was better. She's going to figure out pretty quick that if she gets a little softer and a little less excited about things, I will too. And we can make life a lot easier on all of us if she'll just respect the direction. I'm turning her to the outside now because I put a little pressure up toward her, the front end. If I want to change direction to the outside, I'll cut her off and come at a little different angle. Let her up, she's gonna turn on her own. Woodrow's letting me know I didn't put any fly spray on him, but if I put some pressure out here on the outside, turn her where we want. And I don't think that this horse has ever been worked off of another horse before. But mine has played this game quite a bit and he likes it. Now, put her right there. And what I'd like her to do is look all the way over her shoulder at me with both eyes without moving her feet. But she's moving her feet. Woo! I done threw my flag off. Horse Tales proudly brought to you by Warren Coker, Coastal Bermuda Hay Farms, Olanta, South Carolina. Hey, and a whole lot more. South Carolina Horsemen's Council, the voice of the horse in South Carolina. Morel Tire, Latta, South Carolina, working tirelessly to bring you the best service in the industry. At Anderson Brothers Bank, we have the right formula for your car loan. Doing loans the big banks won't, at rates finance companies don't. Get on the right track with the right car, the right payment, and get to the finish line in record time. Anderson Brothers Bank. Take a moment to think about the food you buy and eat. Is it fresh? I mean really fresh. Or is it shipped from a grower hundreds or even thousands of miles away? Well. Here in South Carolina, we celebrate fresh, locally grown food and unforgettable meals with family and friends. So, choose food that's rooted right here. Choose certified SC grown. It's a matter of taste. You can't always be there to protect her down the road. Make sure the tires she's riding on will. With the revolutionary Michelin Premier tire, even as it wears down over time, its safety doesn't, thanks to Evergrip technology. The Michelin Premier tire, safe when new, safe when worn. I'm Morgan Whalen. I'm the Produce Safety Outreach Coordinator. I help organize all the FISMA Produce Safety Rule trainings throughout the state. If you grow produce in South Carolina, please contact us for more information. I, I tell people when I'm in the round pen that what's important about moving a horse around the round pen or lunging a horse with a lunge line, a lot of people will actually block the horse's path with their own body and then use a lunge whip or something to drive the horse around, which is giving the horse mixed signals. But I, the easiest way for me to tell people to do it is if this flag was a laser beam coming out of my belly button. Wherever I'm pointing this thing, if you look, my toes are pointed the same place my flag is. Even though I'm pushing this horse around, I'm behind the horse. You can see right here, I am pushing this horse by applying pressure behind the horse, not in front of the horse. 
But if I turn this way, I'm putting pressure over here. And then if I use a whip to make the horse go, I'm telling the horse mixed things. So I want to come over here to move the horse this direction. And I'll stay behind the horse here. I'm not going to carry the flag out here and keep flapping it. But if you watch what I'm doing with my belly, I'm pointing my shoulders, my hips, and my toes behind this horse which is basically telling her, if I catch up with you, I'm gonna burn your tail off with my laser beam belly button. She'll start to figure out that the more she pays attention to me, the less of a pain in her butt I am. So if she's feeling annoyed, I want her to think she has to look to me to find comfort. Because if I'm the one annoying her, then she's not gonna wanna be anywhere near me. I want her to think that her choices, her decisions while she's being handled are what are uncomfortable, difficult, or miserable. Everything that has anything to do with me, I'm trying to make it very easy and very clear for her to understand that it's the easiest, most comfortable thing she can do right now is just wait for me to tell her what to do. If she's not waiting on me, then she's getting away with making choices on her own, which is causing the horse to want to do things that I don't want her to do. And if I'm riding a horse and she's moving her feet without permission, then I'm not getting anywhere. So I just invited her over here and she's kind of thinking, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Make a choice. Thank you. So her choice was away again. That's great. I want her to make poor choices and be less oh i didn't want to turn you that way i want to turn you that way Woohoo! it's so hard to be you most horses especially when their name is diva think that they are somebody and that's fine i want that i want a little attitude with a horse not a lot woodrow certainly has plenty but what we have to do is we have to harness that and get her thinking rationally saying, how do I get the idiot in the hat to go away? And it's really simple. Stand still, do nothing, pretend you're asleep and invisible and like it, and ask me what I would like you to do next. And when she does that, just like she is now, I'm making her life more comfortable, okay? I'm not causing her discomfort when she's choosing correctly. Now I know this horse has some woe, but that's why we're also instilling the go and the turns and everything else I want her to do. I don't want to hop up on this horse's back thinking, well, she's just going to kick and buck and try to throw me off because she doesn't want to go somewhere. I want her thinking, the more I pay attention to the guy with the funny mustache or whoever's handling her, that life will get easier, not harder. So I only need one thing. But she wants those three things, leave me alone, put me away and feed me. But she only needs one thing. The one thing she needs is effective leadership. In the absence of effective leadership, every horse will take over at some point by default. If they don't feel like they're being effectively led, that means we're not being firm, we're not being fair, and we're not being consistent, all three, then at some point she's gonna take over and somebody's gonna get hurt. If she feels like she is being provided with effective leadership from us, then she will allow us to have authority over her feet and the rest of her body. But she has to respect us first. I only need one thing from her, even though I want whatever I want, whenever I want it, for as long as I want it. I only need honest effort. That's the only thing I need from her. Anytime I ask her for something and she tries, I need to reduce pressure. I just wanted her to move backwards by applying pressure right here. I'll remove pressure when she's in the act of doing what I want. That's fair. I didn't have to touch her to do it. All I had to do was apply pressure. If I want her head to move further away, I can put pressure right here. As soon as it moves away, I can remove that pressure. If I move my body this way, I'm inviting her over here. If I move my body that way, I'm pushing her over there. So by learning to use our body language, to control their bodies, we can get them to do all kinds of cool stuff. But most people just tug around on whatever we're connected to at the time, and we tend to aggravate them into doing what we want. That's not fair. So in order to convince her that her lot in life now as becoming a riding horse is not as bad as she thinks it is, all we have to do is use those same rules. When she tries to do what I'm trying to teach her, 
I'm going to leave her alone, uh, at least lessen the pressure. So when she decides to do things on her own, like wander off and see if that grass is better over there, I have to do something that shows her that that's not the idea I was looking for. So I'll apply some pressure to move her feet. Generally, we can change any horse's attitude simply by gaining control of their feet and then getting the rest of the body gets easier and easier. Horse Tales, proudly brought to you by Southern States Horse Feed, simply the best horse feed in the equine industry. Nationwide, when the PD Cowboy rides, he rides with Nationwide on his side. South Carolina Department of Agriculture, promoting and nurturing agriculture in South Carolina. Southern States carefully crafts every bag of Legends Horse Feed with the highest quality ingredients available. The Legends Superior line of specially formulated feeds will help keep your horses happy, healthy, and in peak form. You and your horse have a special bond. To keep that bond everlasting, Legends Horse Feeds can accommodate every type of nutritional need a horse might have. Legends, redefining what horse feed should be. Visit your local Southern States dealer to see which Legends Feed is best for your horse. I'm Aaron Wood, Assistant Commissioner for Agency Operations at South Carolina Department of Agriculture. A great stewardship program at SEDA is the Waste Pesticide Disposal Program, where homeowners, farmers, commercial and non-commercial applicators can dispose of old, outdated, or unwanted pesticides. Last year, we collected over 75,000 pounds at 10 events across the state. Be on the lookout for a collection event near you. All right, we're back with Diva and Angie here. We're gonna talk a little bit about what we just did in the round pen with her to get her to change her mind about going forward. Um, you know, the most important things were that every time I asked her to do something, when I was sending her around the round pen, working her in the halter with the stick, or just leading her around on the ground, I was always releasing the horse into performing or releasing into what I wanted rather than trying to help them. Mm -hmm. A huge mistake that so many horse people make and people that have been around horses their whole lives, when they're leading a horse around, they grab way up here where the snap would be on, on a lead rope and they force the horse's head around where they want him to go rather than applying pressure and pushing the horse or inviting the horse to come where you want them to go. Um, you know, backwards, same way. Just ask her and wait, change where we apply pressure, and then eventually get what we want. Trying to take as much as we can away from dealing with pulling and pushing on her face directly and simply getting our body to control her body. Invite her over here when I want to without pulling her. Ask her to step back when I want her to step back. and always releasing her into performing. Uh, the more we get pulling on them and get in a tug of war, especially if we're pulling with both hands at the same time, we're never gonna win that fight. So we have to spend as much time as it takes to learn to offer something fair to the horse by saying, okay, I'm gonna bend you in this position and then I'm gonna send you in that direction. But as soon as you try, I'm gonna release you there to say thank you. Which doesn't mean I'd throw the reins away completely, but if I'm holding my reins in my hands like this, I'm at least gonna soften my hands and give the horse some release and some reduction of pressure so the horse knows that she's on the right track. She's trying to do what we want. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Um, now what about when I try to get her to jog and All I did load. to get her to jog is just push my butt down and squeeze a little bit mm -hmm. and cluck and she jogged every time I asked her to. But she was in the right frame of mind for it because she'd had a lot of work before that today. Um, you know, asking her to lope, I wanna set her up in the correct position. I wanna see the eye on the lead I want. If I want a left lead, I'm gonna just close my left hand, see her left eye, and I'm only gonna use my right leg back to ask her to lope. And I'm gonna, I kiss when I want a horse to lope. Mm -hmm. On the ground, it means come to me. In the saddle, one kiss, next stride correct lead canner every time but we have to set them up for it if the horse isn't prepared properly then you know we're setting them up for failure rather than setting them up to do the right thing and to succeed and that's not fair either because we didn't set the whole thing up correctly so in order to be fair and make it a good deal make the horse want to be where we are doing whatever we're asking them to do because we ask them to do some really difficult things uh, 
in order for them to become compliant, become dependable, and really try every time we ask them to, if it's not fair, you know, all they're going to want to do is go find some comfort somewhere else. So that that has to be our emphasis right away. The horse with this little bit of riding on her, just a couple months, uh, we want to just keep instilling in her that we are rewarders and we're going to be fair every chance we get and that'll have her keep trying harder and harder and harder. So as long as she keeps getting rewarded for effort, she's gonna keep progressing the rest of her life. And that, that's just something that I have to spend more time changing people and their perception of what they're trying to do to make horses do things instead of mm -hmm. rewarding or releasing the horse into performing. Uh, it can be very difficult because we've developed habits over those years. You know, I had them, I used to pull here, pull here, and kick and squeeze and all that things that were wrong to me now, but I rode decent horses, so I thought I must have been doing something right. Well, it turns out I just had better timing than I thought I did, and I accidentally rewarded them sometimes without realizing it. Mm -hmm. But when I really started nailing it down and then studying these things and really paying attention to what I was doing uh, and learned from a lot of really nice really good trainers uh everything got so much better so much quicker that uh, i tell people the horses all got better in spite of me instead of because of me <laughs> so that that's what i do with her i did do a lot of the same things we just did especially a lot of the groundwork because remember we didn't work the offside at all we only worked the near side so uh that's some homework for you moving the hind end around the front end moving the front end around the hind end the whole thing sideways making her go backwards quite a bit uh, those will all instill respect from the horse to you and it'll just make everything easier for the rest of your life together. Excuse me, that's our space. All right, so any more questions? No, I think we're good. I'll take her home and work with her and I'll let you know how it goes. Good luck. Keep <laughs> us posted. All right, thank you.